for this, I'm going to be moderating. I'm going to do my best to moderate this intense debate. But uh, <laughs> no, I think we all agree it was a very good PyCon, easily one of the best. But we're going to have uh, four guests. Uh, you know, if we can have uh, David and Mark and Robert Ansel, and of course, uh, you know, Guido Van Rossum, the uh, creator of the Python programming language, who is with here with us here tonight. Give them give them all a round of applause. But you do have to come up here, though, so you can sit on the panel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we got we got we got mics for you guys, um, and I'll sit here. Yeah. So color my my case. You push it to talk. I think. I think red means muted. Okay. <laughs> Is it muted? Test, test. Test. Yeah, that's it. Okay, you have to push it. You have to. All right. Push. Yeah. Everyone's mic right. working. We're good. Okay. So let's, if if possible, let's just go down the line and get the correct pronunciations of each of your names, and uh, as well as you know, tell us maybe like what sort of stuff you do, and also how many PyCons have you been to? That's what I'm curious about. Where are you going to go left to right? Or my left to right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm Mark. Can you hear me? Is this working? Yes. This is no good? I can be louder. Should I just be louder? Wait for the green. Oh, push, push it? Yeah, push and wait. Push, push and wait. wait. Push and wait. Try so mighty. Why don't you let it Share his. I wish you the best of luck with this. Oh, that was it. It just took that. It just took a little bit right. of time. Okay. <laughs> so my name's Mark, and as you can tell, I'm a co-organizer co of this meetup, which is why I know how all the AV equipment works. Um, no, thank you for hosting Box. Um, I also work on Twisted um, and uh, the TLS implementation in Python that used to be under cryptography. We moved it to its own organization in GitHub, um, and I, this was my third PyCon. Third PyCon. Very nice. Yeah, I have my own mic. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> a true professional. Mic. Thanks, Motion. Uh, I've been to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where Guido goes, PyCon does follow. Yeah. I actually organized uh, a few of them. And before it was PyCon, there was something else too. There was the international there was the international Python conference, and before that, we had a couple workshops. Wow. And so you've been to all of those too. Yes. <laughs> OK. Completionist. You achievement unlocked. And uh, let's see. And, and right now, what sort of stuff do you work on? Well, I work for Dropbox. Sorry, Box. <laughs> uh, <coughs> my main, main project is uh, working on MyPy, which is a static type checker for Python. Uh, there was a talk about that at PyCon, actually, although I didn't give it. And it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, you put annotations in your code, and the type checker treats it as if it is, is a statically typed program and gives you error messages that make sense. Very nice. And Robert? Uh, hi, Robert Ansel. Uh, I work at Box, and let's see, what, this is my third PyCon, and I have been generally working on Mostly on the ops team, but I kind of bounce around as required. <laughs> um, but most typically, I'm sort of a, a handyman across ops and dev doing um, a lot of the automated provisioning, automated patching. Uh, anything automated is pretty much my job description at this point. So Python is a Swiss army knife that is very, very helpful <laughs> Beautiful. from day to day. And David? Hi, I'm Dave, and my microphone works, I guess. It does. Uh, so I'm on the desktop client side. I do something similar to Dropbox, working on the client that syncs files. And I've been at Box for five years, and I've been five years at PyCon, and five years in Python. So uh, before that, I was in C++, and now I just really enjoy programming in Python. It's really a, a lot of fun. Wonderful. So it seems like we have you know, veterans across the board here in all respects, but a nice sort of uh, mix of different areas that you work on. So that uh, leads me to my next question, which is like, based on your expertise and experience, did you have a favorite talk from the conference, and what was it? Because if you don't know, all of PyCon's talks are online. So take notes. Uh, you know, these are going to be some of the best ones that you have out there. Once again, Mark. Just go down the line. Down okay. the line once again. 
Feel free to discuss among yourselves. <laughs> so uh, a talk that I liked quite a bit um, was Itamar's talk on testing. Um, that was yours? OK, I can pick another one. Glyph, <laughs> Glyph had a talk on testing uh, that was also really good. Um, both of them talked about um, a, different approaches to thinking about testing. Um, a lot of the times you'll hear, you should write tests for your code, you should unit test your code, and then it kind of stops there. And it's difficult to come up with practical strategies to get useful tests out of your code. And both of these talks um, offered good perspectives, practical perspectives. And in the case of Itamar's talk, which you should talk more about, um, they, they, had, like, they offered a practical methodology for approaching your tests, um, which was very nice and very, I found very helpful. And so how do you spell Itamar's name for those who are taking notes? Oh, geez. It's, it's I-T-A-M-A-R. It's the first slide. All right. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> so Guido, did you, did you have a favorite talk? Did you go to many talks? I know a lot of people don't like to. They've seen it all. I know. I, I think I saw most of the keynotes. And I saw the talk about MyPy by David and Yuka. And I saw a talk named Dial M for Mentor by one of my M mentees, Mariella, uh, about the value and importance of mentorship and how to choose a mentor and sort of how a mentor can help you over all sorts of mental blockages that make you think you're not capable of participating in this community. Definitely. No, I mean, uh, I've, heard that, I've heard senior engineers say that the most important output of senior engineers is more senior engineers. <laughs> so, so mentorship is really key to that. Would, so you recommend the talk about mentorship then? Yes. Nice. Robert, I hope I stalled long enough for you to come up with another, <laughs> another talk that is your favorite. So I'm, I'm just going to go a little bit more into sort of the subject matter of the, the testing talk that I was uh, referring to. Basically, the, everybody knows about unit and integration testing. That's sort of the step one of how to have testable code. Uh, but then if you want to level up past that, then you start getting into things like fuzzing, uh, mutation testing, uh, property-based testing. Uh, so basically, you're, you're able to do much more in-depth tests than you would ever imagine. You know, nobody thought about doing Chaos Monkey, because why would you? It's a terrible idea. Uh, but you know, mutation testing does just that. It's, we're going to tweak your code and see what breaks. And if your unit tests didn't catch that we just changed your code, there's something wrong with your unit tests. Um, so th th it's sort of just the mechanism by which you can go much further with your testing architecture and catch things that are beyond the, the traditional, oh, somebody had a typo, and they they missed something. It's, you can actually check the health of your testing infrastructure. Very nice. And um, so there's always a couple of speakers at PyCon that are always entertaining. So I try to make sure I go to their talks. Uh, David Beasley. Um, nice. I go to uh, Raymond Hedger. Always does a good talk. Um, and uh, Brandon Rhodes always good. So I made sure I caught all those guys. I, of course, caught everybody on the panel here. You know, Guido and Moshe. Um, but I think uh, Larry Hastings' stuff on the galectomy was what I was looking forward to because I wanted to see the progress on it. And he, uh, like he said, everybody, everybody who walks up to him says, hey, how's the galectomy going? So that was the name of his talk. So he says, you don't need to ask that question anymore. Uh, and it was uh, really interesting because I know he'd been working really, really hard on it, and I wanted to see what had been going on. And uh, it also echoes a lot of my own experiences with performance optimizations and that it can be incredibly frustrating where you're like, ah, oh, this is it. This is going to really win. And then you try it out, and it gets worse. <laughs> <coughs> and you're like, well, I don't want to throw away this work. I'll just put it aside and then branch. And maybe it, I'll be able to bring it back in when I learn something else. Uh, and that's what a lot of his talk was about, sort of the trials and tribulations of, of removing the gill and how um, it starts off really easy. And then you, know, you, you, you test stuff, and it's just not getting any faster. But he, it was really amazing. The, the progress that he's made is really smart guy. And, Lots of people have been helping out with ideas and stuff like that. So that was really interesting. And, and so the prognosis is mostly good? Well, yeah. I, well, I don't want to ruin the ending That's of his yeah, talk. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go watch it for yourself. Uh, but to start off, you know, he started, the idea is to remove the gill and then still have single-threaded programs run as fast as they do today with, the, with uh, no gill, with, with the gill, you know, without the gill in the same speed. And um, so putting in locks and all the shared stuff, and then running it and finding out it's 20 times slower. And then trying to get, go from there to trying to get one-to-one. -to -one. 
And so, like, has anyone placed any bets that you know of, Guido, like, you know, as to whether or not this will be a grand success? Well, I'm not holding my breath yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it may happen, it may not happen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely regardless of how well he manages to to sort of keep it backwards compatible, it's, it's going to be at least Python 4.0, if not 5.0. You heard it here, anyway, folks. It comes. <laughs> 4.0. Get excited. <laughs> we, should no. call it, we should call it 40,000. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Warhammer. Uh, <who? laughs> but, uh, but sort of in that, in that vein of language advancement and so forth, uh, a lot of people who, uh, you know, don't know a lot about PyCon, like prior to PyCon and after PyCon, there are a lot of activities as well. I'm sort of curious about one in particular, the, the language summit that was, you know, before, that is before every PyCon, I think. Uh, how did that go this year? It went very well. Uh, that's where I learned the outcome of Larry's Galactomy talk. You get a preview. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did, he did like a 10, 15 minute uh, summary version. Uh, I, I can't actually sort of recall individual sessions from Language Summit, but there is, there was a journalist present from Linux. Uh, LWS? I think so, yeah. yeah. And he wrote up very detailed summaries. Yes. And so tho those, and, and I'm, I am totally blanking out on his name. I think it was Jake something. Jake Edge? What was it? Jake Edge. Jake Edge. Yeah. Jake Edge? All right, that's a cool name. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely. If, if you're interested in like sort of technology journalism, I actually highly recommend checking out lwn.net. It's one of the oldest names in the biz, and it's got uh, a really, really fantastic journalistic approach compared to, I don't know. It's not just Linux either. As you could, like, they're talking about Python, so sure. just because it's Linux Weekly News, if you're not into that, there's going to be something you like. Right. No, and even though it's a subscription model, after a week, the articles actually uh, become free to read. I, I actually like their model a lot, and I recommend supporting them if you got the salary, which I think a lot of you do. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's good to hear that Language Summit is going well. Um, did anyone stay for the sprints afterwards? One day. One day. Wow, one day is popular, it seems. Uh, n n not you guys? Yeah, stuck around for a day, but that was about it. Yet another day. Okay, so between, can we go for four? Uh, this time I didn't because we had a shipping thing gotcha. going on, so there was a real crunch time here. So, but, but, I, otherwise, I would have stayed. But, but you know, so each of you stayed for three quarters of a day on average. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any interesting developments there? I can't turn my mic. On. Somebody shall stop shoot. turning no, off no, the mic, Mark. <laughs> Somebody else go. You go. I made no meaningful contributions, so. Mm -hmm. My my uh, merge my pull request was uh, rejected. Rejected. It was what rough. Pro what project? Uh, it was on uh, one of it was basically an Apache integration mm. for for with Python. It was yeah, they, yeah. What was what was the what was the experience? Were you a new developer for that project? Yeah, I'd never touched it before. I'd never heard of it before. I just sort of showed up to one of the sprints. And mm -hmm. What was what was the onboarding experience like? Because I know sometimes that can be not good or it can be really really good. I'm. Not gonna go into that. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. No. It, 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 it was positive. rough for me mm -hmm. for reasons that were outside of the original developer's control. It's often the case. Yeah. I mean, everybody like uh, having a everybody's development environment's a little different. So, yeah, but I there 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 are definitely things you can do, mm -hmm. and we we did a MyPy sprint, and a couple of uh, the Dropbox MyPy team stayed for at least three days, mm -hmm. uh, and so we did the same thing last year. Last year, we were not sufficiently prepared, and we had a lot of people show up who didn't have sufficient sort of basic knowledge to be effective, and, and it was, was like, we got a few good contributions out of it, but sort of not that much. And this year, we sort of, having learned from that experience and also from a smaller sprint that was uh, over weekend in San Francisco, somewhere in March, that I didn't personally attend. Uh, we learned to sort of prepare projects and sort of vet the, the people who come to the project a bit 
And we were much more successful in getting people to sort of come up with reasonable projects and uh, submit pull requests that were accepted or that are, are about accepted. But the sort of, the, ch the champion of all that is the Zulip project. Yeah. It's an open source <laughs> chat uh, system. And they, they, have, they have an amazing onboarding they, experience. I think they had 27 people show up for their sprint. Yeah, it's, it's like basically a Slack or HipChat competitor that's open source. Um, written in Python. Written in Python, absolutely. Uh, a good portion of their team worked at Dropbox for a while. Um, it maybe still do, but basically I was amazed, right? They were like newbies, first PyCon ever, and somehow they'd heard of this thing that I hadn't heard of a year ago. You know, and they were excited to work on the sprint. I don't know exactly what made that work, but they've certainly unlocked some secrets there. So speaking of advice, well, Mark, did you work on the project you want to talk about? Well, I, I have some, I'd like to, it's difficult to onboard new developers in general, and it's interesting to hear uh, if, like, so it sounds like a practical piece of advice that we can learn from the MyPy experiences. If you're going to bring new developers in, you should have defined projects that are appropriate for people who aren't super familiar with the project. There are other pieces of advice. Um, I, I mean, I was part of the Twisted Sprint, so as you can imagine, it's, we also had some issues bringing new developers on. Um, so I'd be interested to hear more if there's any other pieces of practical advice that you might have for, for bringing new people on board. Well, my, my own advice would also be try to, try to approach, the, try to sort of reach out to people that you think might be good contributors rather than just sitting there with a sign out front that says, open to all who come. Okay. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're sort of, I mean, that is what, the Zul what the Tim Abbott from Zulip did very well. Mm. He put the word out before PyCon and mm. during PyCon. Okay. Uh, and so people were excited about the project and had, had the uh, opportunity to read up on it a bit. And, and sort of finding, you, you have to reach out to people that's more effective than, than, than just sort of saying every, yeah, <laughs> if you cast too wide a net, you'll get. David, did you have a, something to add? I was gonna say, it seemed like for me when I did sprints, I was there for a four day sprint and it's best if it's, that the groups think of it as almost like a recruiting opportunity and mm -hmm. not sort of like a goal to get a lot of patches done or bugs fixed but get people up to speed on the code and that they will be contributing in the future. Right. Um, I did a, I sat in with uh, Twisted a bit and I sat in with uh, the CPython group and the CPython group worked out better than Twisted, apologies. <laughs> um, it's fair. But I was able to get a number of patches done for CPython, but that was, they, they really helped hand hold me through setting up my development environment, getting everything set up. Uh, I was building on Windows, which a lot of people don't use, uh, but really walk through a lot of that stuff. And the, the, mostly the goal was to get me to be able to contribute in the future. Mm -hmm. And say like, you know, you're, you're Windows guy, we need Windows guys in the future, so we're gonna spend some time working with you so that gets you up to speed. And uh, yeah, I mean, you forgot the most important like, you know, tip, Mark. You could start a meetup and invite people to you and onboard them on your projects then. It's so like, you know, for a little bit of foreshadowing, we are planning on having a project night uh, in the near future. And so you can try out some of these tips then. Uh, my tip is write the docs before the sprint. Uh, so anyways, um, well, you know, we're sort of, it's a short panel. Uh, you know, I was kind of wondering, is there something, as a short answer, like, you know, that you'd like to see in next year's PyCon in Cleveland, aside from more shining faces from the audience out there? I'm going to start from that end now. Sure, I've got something already in mind. Okay. Um, so I organized uh, the code contests for Box at uh, each of the PyCons. So you know we have uh, prizes and ask people to, to code stuff. Um, and I always do all the coding contests that are there. But what I would like to, at PyCon, at least on the website, is a collection or a directory of who's got code contests. Hmm. Because as it is, you have to kind of like crawl around the, uh, the area to try to talk to everybody, and then it's just through the rumor mill, you know, that somebody will say, oh, LinkedIn has got a contest. That's really cool, so or so-and-so. So, -and -so, you so know. these are coding contests that are run by the, uh, the companies that you're there representing, not like, because there was, I think, a boff, or rather like an open session that was a tournament. There was like some coding tournament that was happening just at PyCon. It wasn't related to any outside companies. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, no, uh, well, so I don't know about the decoding term. It wasn't on, on the website. So it, it, it was, in the, like it was in the Birds of Feather open sessions board. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I hosted stuff on the open sessions. That may be the one that you saw. Oh, maybe. Okay. Um, so, yeah, because I would, I would host a number of rooms where people could come and work on, on the contest. Gotcha. Uh, and that's one of the things I, I learned after the second or third PyCon is that people want some help on the coding contests. So we would help people with any of the coding contests. Just come on in and we'll help coach you and you can learn more Python and then submit and get your t-shirt or whatever the prizes are. There. And it's not cheating. That's within the rules. Yeah, there's nothing that says, right, yeah, that's not Just cheating. checking, just checking, yeah. okay. I mean, we're not going to write the code for them. We're, you know, they say, like, here, you might want to use a list for this. Or sure, nudge, that. nudge, wink, wink, all right. Uh, nice pro tips, pro tips, that's all. <laughs> pro tips, okay. All right, any, any other additions, uh, you know, for next year, maybe? I mean, I think in that same vein, um, what I was actually thinking of was helping out people with coding contests uh, opened me up to the idea of having things like, open office hours effectively, saying you have an expert, like, you know, at PyCon, you are f it's full of experts on a ton of different topics, and if you have people that are interested in just spreading more knowledge in a subject matter that they are, have interest or a focus in, being able to say, um, we have an expert in uh, multi-threaded design, like systems design, something like that, and having an op open spaces that are dedicated to people coming in and saying, I have this weird project, this weird problem I'm fiddling with, mm -hmm. do you have any ideas, or directions I could run with this, things like that. That's interesting. Yeah, I actually. Really good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I ran five different open sessions this time about plugins <laughs> and logging and uh, reliability and uh, even there was one about podcasts that I was there. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the open sessions and that one sounds really interesting in particular. You should come and run it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right. How about you, Guido? You've seen it all after all these years, right? Is there anything you miss from the days past, or anything that you see going forward? Well, it, it's, it's so big. The, the, the first Python workshop, there were 20 people. Uh -huh. and, and a few years later, there were two or 300 people. And for the longest time, we had one track. And it was so nice, because I could go to all the talks. And now I go to none of the talks, because I, I get stuck in the hallways. <laughs> <laughs> we need, we need, my, we need my, a Guido mobile to transport my, you between the They talk about no, the my, hallway my, track, and that's a valuable track. It, it the is, hallway it track. It's a viable track, but it's the only track I end up uh, participating <laughs> in. My, my personal wish is actually cardboard cut out of myself so people can take <laughs> selfies without taking my time. That, that can be done, I think. You can probably, yeah, that's a pretty simple request. Cleveland can make it happen. How about you, Mark? I like this idea with more organization. I think having uh, like around, if, if there's a, oh, office hours that could be publicized before they're set up, on the one hand, it's really great to have the dynamicism of the BOF board. So if you haven't been to PyCon, uh, every morning of the conference, uh, there's a big board with hours uh, going down and then rooms going across. And you put up, if you want to have an open space um, to talk about something, uh, it can be anything. There was a knot tying one. There's one on podcasts. There was one on asynchronous programming in Python. You write your information down on a piece of, on a, like a three by five card and put it in the slot. So this is really cool because you kind of walk in and see what's available, maybe post your own. But it would be great if there, if, if like you knew ahead of time, like we're definitely going to have an async buff, which yeah. is known if you're, if you're part of that community, it's well known that's going to happen. Would it be nice to see some greater organization around it to, for planning, if All that's right. possible? Definitely. Well, let's see. Any l tweetable advice for people out there for next year's PyCon as a very last question? From anyone, not everyone. Go. Go. All right. So we have one vote for go. <laughs> Register early and book your hotel early because those things get full. And I'll actually second that. So basically, like, if you know you're going, Right, get your hotel like immediately. The hotel is what ran out like soonest in, in yeah. my book. Right, like just get the hotel room because the thing is, you can cancel a hotel reservation. It's harder to cancel your ticket and it's harder to cancel your airline ticket, but the hotel reservation is really easy to cancel. So definitely get your hotel early. Uh, sorry, I don't have better Python advice for you, but we'll be around tonight and uh, we can continue this then. But in the meantime, thank you guys for a great set of answers. Uh, let's give a round of applause.